Hello chess friends and welcome to Zara's chess channel and welcome to the life and chess games of Magnus Carlsen. So in this series we're following Magnus Carlsen's life, Magnus Carlsen's chess games through his career and today I wanted to show you really an important step I think that it was also in Magnus Carlsen's career. It was the Stockholm tournament in 2003 in which Magnus Carlsen gained his second international master norm. Then a couple of months later he gained uh, also his third international master norm and finally became an international master in chess. Uh, what I like about this series is that uh, I can always see Magnus Carlsen's improvements uh, through his career. Every month he became stronger and stronger and stronger, more tactically prepared, more positionally prepared, more uh, prepared in opening theory. And it's an incredible series, I think, because we can see how really Magnus uh, was strong back in 2003 at the age of 13 years only, which is an incredible thing. And today I wanted to show you, well, it was a great, great sacrificing game played by Magnus uh, against Dennis Rillander uh, in 2003 as I said in the Stockholm tournament with the double bishop sacrifice which is an incredible thing because when I was 13 years old uh, I I wasn't even familiar with this opening that both are uh, both of these players are playing they play this uh, semi Leningrad variation of the Dutch of the Dutch defense and uh, I had my troubles also while playing against this particular opening and what I liked is that Magnus played the the same opening style like I used to play uh, against this Leningrad variation it's a really really a dynamic game and uh, that's why I decided to show you uh, this is a very nice game in in our very nice series so do let's check out the game uh, we have uh, d4 by Magnus uh, we have f5 by uh, Dennis Rillander uh, g3 and uh, I had my troubles while playing against the Dutch defense because uh, most of the times Black would choose basically two uh, sidelines of the t uh, Dutch defense. Either he will play um, with the move g6 and knight to f6, which is this Leningrad variation, or he'll build sort of a stonewall formation with moves as d5 and uh, e6. So, in my opening preparation, I uh, like really this move that uh, Magnus Carlsen is playing. I played also against the Dutch defense setups, which leaves you a huge flexibility in the continuation of the game. I'm not going to explain you so much theory today, uh, but if you have troubles uh, to play against the Dutch defense, check out this move G3. There is a deep, deep line that I have prepared against both of these variations. So, as I said, against this uh, Leningrad variation and also the Stonewall formation with the move D5 and E6. And, for instance, C6 building sort of a uh, battery on, on life course with the pawns. And that's why uh, this G3 leaves you flexibility. Uh, I'll explain it more when in my D4 series. If you're familiar with my YouTube chess channel i've created also this d4 series in which i uh, explain you opening theory for d4 players so i'll explain uh, this move g3 in a deeper positional understanding why is it important to stay flexible uh, let me uh, show you just um, um, f flexible line you could sometimes try to play the move knight to h3 and uh, this leaves you the opportunity maybe to play then after that f3 and e4 but that's just one particular line i'm not going to explain this particular line the problem is after knight to f6 we play bishop to g2 and now when your opponent has showed his cards uh, that he will play the semi leningrad variation of the dutch defense with the move g6 then I play also like Magnus uh, plays here the move knight to f3. Now, uh, the problem for black is that uh, you will probably play some d6 and e5 moves trying to go into sort of a king's indian setup but now uh, after bishop to g7 uh, here magnus simply castled which is a good thing and now after castling uh, the most flexible move is to move c4 and uh, here d6 played as said uh, d5 doesn't bring you so much you don't want to uh, expose yourself on light squares too much because if you open for instance this uh, light square diagonal for for the light square bishop it could be really dangerous so that's why d5 i don't think that it brings you so much and basically this game will be sort of a battle between these two bishops because these two bishops have the best activity uh, on the board and i'll show you also the problems from wise perspective of, of this particular variation so here d6 was played by um, uh, rillander and now knight to c3 by carlson and now knight to c6 and uh, this is now already the critical moment uh, of uh, this opening uh, the idea of blacks is for instance if you try maybe let's try a passive move 
uh, but a developing move, a normal move, a b3 move, then black will try to move e5. And uh, the idea behind this move e5, after potential d5, knight to e7, is to build sort of a king's Indian setup. Uh, like in the King's Indian uh, defense, now our main idea, our main goal is to simply push pawns here, h6, uh, g5, f4, uh, uh, e4, maybe even g4 if the position allows it. So now this opening is sort of an improved King's Indian setup like in the orthodox variation in which uh, white for instance will coordinate the attack with potential c5, b4 moves. On the other hand, uh, black will try uh, flank attack on the king side because this is uh, the direction of our attack because uh, the pawns are always showing us the direction of the attack so in this game uh, black could have some dangerous attacks so that's why after the move knight to c6 you see magnus didn't play some calm moves he played the move d5 uh, attacking immediately the knight and uh, black could also try some knight to b8 moves then after that maybe knight to uh, d7 knight to c5 with a5 creating sort of a blocking system uh, on the queen side and here willander played the move knight to e5 which is the common line still in this um, leningrad variation of the dutch defense and magnus simply took knight takes um, e5 there is also a line uh, to go here maybe knight to a5 uh, then you have to play b3 and it's really really a great tactical battle here after knight take knight to e4 you're pinning the knight uh, you have to take out the knight knight takes e4 after bishop to a1 we have knight to g5 uh, you lost your rook but there are some troubles here for black now after potential c5 c5 has to be played because uh, the threat was to play the move uh, b4 and trap the knight uh, you can play the move e4 and now there are problems in uh, black's in black's position these are this light squares in front of uh, black's king these are the squares that we want to occupy with some potential i don't know rook to e1 and then if the position on the e file opens then knight to e6 is very dangerous would be really paralyzing for black this knight would be out of the game and basically you have only the bishop as the defender uh, against the king so this would be a positional problem uh, for for uh, for black so that's why here knight to e5 was played not not this move knight to a5 so in the game as said knight takes e4 was played d takes e, uh, knight takes e5 d takes e5 and now e4 for instance if you take out uh, this was not played in the game in the game f4 was played here by rylander if you for instance take uh, uh, f takes e4 then we have knight takes e4 knight takes e4 bishop takes e4 and i simply like more uh white's position because uh, let's see possible bishop to f5 we could try maybe f3 and after trades of bishops i simply like more uh white's position because this is now our main target here uh the weak pawn on e5 and here we could still continue with our pawn turn on the queen side with b4 c5 ideas even a4 a5 queen to b3 is a common idea bishop to e3 connecting rooks so this bishop is a little bit trapped on the other hand white's bishop is perfectly fine so that's why after the move e4 f4 is still common theory it leads now into a very very tactical game after uh, g takes f4 we have e takes f4 uh, now e5 you could also try uh, bishop to f4 it's also a good line i think for white after knight takes e4 uh discovery attacking the uh, the bishop then you could try knight to e2 protecting everything and now uh bishop to f5 would be still main theory now queen to b3 i think uh, white has a good game here because we have now the pawn flexibility here we could try c5 and maybe d6 if the position of course allowed it then create also some dangerous attacks still you can also try to kick, kick away this knight with the move f3 or the main idea would be probably here to bring our rooks on on this very active uh, files on the c and d file so uh, that's why uh, in the game after he takes f4 magnus tried to move e5 he tried a different uh, line and uh, rylander played the most active move he played the move knight to g4 and here magnus closes the um, the light square bishop it seems like a good move it's still a common theory but there is one problem about magnus position uh, it's this advanced f4 pawn this advanced f4 pawn will cause some troubles now in magnus carlson's position because as i said one of the ideas of the leningrad the dutch defense is 
to expand here on the king side with some potential f4 f3 f5 moves maybe even if the position allows a g5 and here uh, Mag uh Rylander played the move knight to e5 attacking this c4 pawn and the magnus plays here i think a mistake uh, he, um, it's not the best way uh, to proceed here he played the move c5 uh still you have this pawn flexibility you have gained some space on the fifth rank but in a couple of moves, I think uh, black could crack the position with potential C, uh, C6 moves or B6 moves. Uh, the better way, I think, for, to proceed here is to play the move rook to E1, uh, because there is this threat of blacks to play the move immediately F3 and lock the bishop. Uh, so that's why I think rook to E1 uh, has to be played. And for instance, if you try knight to C4, we could try rook to E4, attacking attacking the knight, and after uh, knight to D6, uh, maybe uh, take out this pawn on F4. Uh, still, if black tries here uh, not to take the pawn, if he, for instance, uh, tries to move f3 here, then you have bishop to f1 and you cover your c4. So, um, as said, in the game c5 was played by Magnus, not not this move rook to e1, and here uh, f3 played by uh, Dennis Rillander. And this game becomes now really, really dynamic because Magnus played the move bishop to h3, and now we have g5, which was a good idea of Dennis Rillander to lock the bishop. But a better line would have been, I think, here for black to proceed. That's why this c5 move was a mistake, uh, to proceed with the move b6. This b6 move uh, forces now Magnus basically to go with the queen into the game with the move queen to d4 to protect the pawn and after uh, b takes c5. Here we have queen to c5 and now knight to d3 is very very dangerous after something like, I don't know, knight to c4. We could simply take out this very important bishop knight takes c1 rook takes c1 and uh, black is continuing the game uh, with the bishop pair uh, we have an advanced pawn here on f3 we have still possibility to crack this uh, position this pawn chain that white has built here with potential c6 moves uh, it has to be prepared of course but the main idea uh, the main positional idea would be here to crack these pawns and still we could also try some uh, attacks on the b file activate our bishops or maybe even play a very dangerous move uh, a5 then activate the bishop with the move bishop to a6 so uh, in the game as i said instead of this uh, b6 uh, g5 was played and it's really really tricky now also this move because in the next move magnus could lose the bishop and the rook to e1 is simply too passive and uh, here magnus decides to go really into a wild line i really like now the game here he played the move king to h1 allowing his opponent to lock his bishop with the move g4 which was played in the game uh there you could make a mistake here it seems that you can't take the pawn but if you take the pawn basically it's game over if you for instance try bishop to g5 then there is this problem of this move queen to e8 uh, the the queen could go here on g6 attacking the bishop and also some discovered attacks uh, against uh, white king and if you for instance retreat with the king to h1 then uh, queen to h5 uh, I think wins immediately the game. You lose one bishop in the next move, so this would be game over. And Magnus, uh, after the move, after the move g5, as said, he didn't go for uh, they didn't go for this pawn. He simply played king to h1, allowing his opponent to lock the bishop to take out the bishop and here uh, g4. And it seems now that Magnus has a mistake, has made some mistakes, but now. We have a great move uh, that Magnus found. He played move queen to d4, attacking uh, the knight. Uh, discovered attacks are not so good immediately uh, here from Black's perspective because uh, your pawn is hanging. This move queen to d4 really forces now you know, Black to take the bishop. And now uh, Magnus found a great move. I would love for you maybe to try to find the best next move now. Um, here Magnus played, I think, a great great tactical tactical shot which uh, i think surprised his opponent and he played the move bishop to h6 if uh, you in the game bishop takes h6 was played by anyway by rillander uh, allowing magnus to take out this knight on e5 but uh, if you for instance go bishop to f6 if you don't want uh, to trade off the bishops uh, if you don't want to lose your knight then we have a rook to g1 
uh, attacking the king. Uh, if we try knight to g6 to cover, then we could try queen to e4. This is very dangerous because we will have a triple attack now on this knight on g6. Some rook sacrifices on g6 are possible. If we, for instance, get out of this g-file mess, then we could simply take out um, uh, the rook after queen takes f8. Still, we could try rook to g3 and double up rooks on the g-file, activate somehow this knight. This could be really, really, really dangerous. Black could try maybe bishop takes c3, b takes c3. But I'm not seeing a clear way how this bishop should go into the game. This is the main problem. And here after queen to f4, I think we can give, simply go queen to c2. And uh, here after potential queen to e5 to activate the queen. We could even sacrifice uh, the rook further after um, h takes g6. We have queen to g6. This could be really a problem. Now we could try to activate uh, here the rook and creating some dangerous tracks threats on the g file and the problem for black is, is here that you cannot activate the rook you cannot activate the bishop basically you can all the only thing you can do maybe is to sacrifice the, your bishop for the pawn on e6 so that's why in the game after this move bishop to h6 really the simple took he has to take out the bishop but now magnus takes and you see now the problems on the g file this move king to h1 was a great one allowing your opponent to take out our bishop on h3 but now this g file mess is really something that uh, black needs to handle here in the game rook to f6 was played a correct move you're trying at least to compete somehow on the g file rook to g1 we have rook to g6 and now uh, queen to h5 attacking the rook you have to cover with your king and now rook takes g6 anyway h takes g6 and now rook to g1 attacking this g6 weakness this is now our main target in the game queen to e8 has to be played but now knight to e4 activating the knight this is a really really a messy position here for black king to h7 doesn't work immediately because you get knight to knight to g5 uh, attacking the king you cannot take out with the bishop because the queen is here uh, in the game c6 was played by uh, by dennis rinder trying finally to split the position uh, of the pawns but it was a little bit too late because as i said in one particular moment black had the opportunity to push the pawn on b6 cracking the pawn storm but now it's too late after the move c6 magnus plays queen to d4 attacking the king and uh, there are now two choices basically you can uh, go here on g8 or on h7 uh, if you try in the game king to g8 was played but if you try let's see the possible continuation if you try king to h7 then d6 is very very tricky this is the problem if you take then we have this fork on f6 still it seems nothing is lost because uh, uh, white's queen is also uh, on under under fire but now after king to h8 we could simply play queen to g uh, queen to e4 attacking here this g6 pawn that's the main problem in white's position because now you have to retreat with the queen uh, the problem is you cannot go to f7 protecting your g6 if you for instance take uh, the pawn on e6 then you get queen to g6 anyway and you get checkmated in the next move the main threats are here uh, uh, queen to g8 or queen to h7 and it's checkmate so you cannot protect everything and if you for instance even take out the knight still you get checkmated on g8 so tricky tricky stuff you see after the move queen to e5 uh, so here really there didn't play the move h king to h7 he tried king to g8 but now knight to g4 uh, g5 very important move bishop to g5 we have queen to g5 and now uh, king to uh, g7 was played again if you try uh, here c takes d5 then a queen to h6 wins the game immediately you cannot protect anymore the spawn you see rook to g6 is this main threat you lose uh, the game eventually so that's why after the move queen to g5 you see really the tried to defend king to g7 but now rook to g4 activating the rook the main idea is now to play rook to h4 uh, queen to f6 and uh, in the game finally bishop to a uh, e6 was played so Again, it's a little bit too late because it leaves now uh, Magnus the opportunity to, to activate the queen. Queen to uh, e5, the very important check. King to g8, and this is game over because we have rook to h4. There is no way you can protect this uh, check here on h8. In the game, a bishop to d5 was played, but it's too late because we have rook to h8, king to f7. We have um, rook to uh, h7 again, a very important check. And after king to f8, we have 
queen to g7 and a forced checkmate great great game by magnus i think uh, this was really the critical moment this move king to h1 um, allowing black to trap the bishop uh, then after that simply play queen to d4 great great tactics here by magnus h takes uh, g takes h3 was played and now bishop to h6 great great tactical beauty here by magnus deflecting uh, the bishop from the defense of, of this knight simply taking out the knight and get use of our g file and this was really gr a great great attack by the 13 year old magnus and as i said in this tournament he gained his second international norm will follow now also magnus third international master norm and then his road to become uh, the grandmaster in chess then after that we'll have also some great games i have prepared already many many games uh, i've uh, listed them out uh, of their of his best chess games because he'll play also against kasparov karpov he'll play for the world championship we'll have great great moments in the series and i hope you like the series as i said uh, meanwhile you can watch my uh, other comment to chess games of this series of the best chess games uh, by play by magnus carlson in his career and you can also watch my best chess games of all time if you want to see the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course